Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Film Buds podcast. This is episode number 123, and my name is Henry. I'm Chloe. And we are coming at you remotely once again. Yes. We're, <laughs> as always, we're trying to improve the audio, so hopefully it'll sound better this time. But thank you so much for joining us. And we have a bit of a... <laughs> that's, Special guest. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> returning, returning fan favorite, my cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it, everyone. I don't have doors. I've been over, there's no doors in my house. What can I say? My parents are hippies. No, you're, you're, all, you're fine. <laughs> and this time around, we have something a little bit different. We have a review of the new... I guess it came out last year, or it was done last year, but F- Phoebe Waller Bridges Fleabag Live, which was the last year. Yeah, but it was only re- no it was way. it was just released for rent. Must have been before the show. Maybe she filmed it post show, but the that, that the that's show right. came from her original one woman show. Yeah, that's that's what I meant to say. Thank you, and. Yeah, so Fleabag Live, which is available on Amazon for rent, and all the proceeds go to help support COVID-19 charities. And then we have a couple retro... It was hard for me to click, Henry. I said, no, no, they don't get any of it. They oh, don't yeah. get any of it. Yeah. Click it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a couple retro reviews of the... Also, a, a filmed version of a Broadway play. or Two. Play, Yeah. Oh, hello on Broadway, which, <laughs> <laughs> which is done by John Mulaney and Nick Kroll. It's like a cult classic, except not bad. It's like a cult classic, but not bad. Just like uh, niche, maybe. Like yeah. it's a big deal to a select group of people. Yeah, which is on Netflix. And then we also are going to be talking about American Son, which is a the saddest play you've ever seen. Yeah, which is a adaptation of a Broadway play, and so a lot of interesting choices. And thank you. No, Chloe. it is the Broadway play. I mean, it's a filmed of the Broadway play, basically. Right. Wait. Are, so we're talking about with <laughs> it's ninety eight percent the same as the Broadway play. Oh, I see. Okay. It's it's exact. It's the I would say it's the same ratio. New to Broadway, play, new to filmed versus original version as Oh Hello. Okay. Well, yeah, I was just worried. Very be- close. In case- Same actors and everything. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I was just worried because at first I thought I may have watched the wrong thing. But no, it's, yeah, just a very close adaptation. Was it really sad? It was, yeah. That was it. With, with, with Carrie Washington? <laughs> yeah, that was okay, it. Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> then maybe a little bit of news. Maybe talk about Atomic Blonde 2, Chloe, that <gasps> little announcement. Yeah. Can't wait. So, all the usual stuff. So, thank you Except for- we got to work James McAvoy back into it. That's true. We got to work him back <laughs> in. I don't know yeah. how. <laughs> yep. Could be tricky. Maybe she gets amnesia. Mm-hmm. It says, have we met? He says, absolutely not. <laughs> 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 we got to make sure Pennywise is in there again. Oh, of course. I need the original cast returning. I don't like... Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 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 Well, Chloe, how are you doing? Oh, not bad, Henry. I got someone's... No, okay. I'm putting it wrong. I said to somebody, and they're like, oh, they're so nice of you. No, I'm not nice. Someone's groceries were brought to my house by accident. Ooh. Because of a lot of people are ordering their groceries to their homes due to this situation right and i said well this poses a new challenge this is fun so i put on my little mask my little gloves and i got my little you know soccer cooler with the you know it's got wheels and a little handle and i just felt like i was in a weird little almost like an episode of hey arnold that kind of vibe like walking around the neighborhood with you know these groceries, trying to knocking on every door, seeing the, oh, these are groceries? No, okay, bye. These yeah. are, okay, stay well. I was just walking around the neighborhood. Do, 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 do. Eventually, I found the, 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 the owner of the groceries. So, oh, good. That was good. Yeah. But 
They definitely weren't mine. And I was on the time crunch, Henry, because there was raw meat, like, you know, Ooh. packaged meat, and there was butter. And I said, oh, my God, uh-uh. I got to get going. I got to get going. And also, <laughs> <laughs> too, we got to find the, you know, everything's heightened in this because nothing is, yeah. So, also adding to the challenge, Henry, mm. is I was briefly awoken by a dinner, right, early in the morn. Okay. I said, Oh, what was that? No smoke this time. So mm-hmm. I went to the door that you know. Yes, I know. With I, which you're familiar. I know it well, yes. Everyone <laughs> in and out to that door, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But it's not actually the front door, technically. Hmm. The, you know the my big the big pathway up to the, the stones and then the columns and whatever? Yes. Technically, that's the front door. And somehow this person who's never been to my house, I assume, I didn't see them, Figured that out. They knew. they If they'd been to my house, that means they knew me. And they knew I would never order that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of beer and a lot of butter. It's two things, club over, and red meat. Three things, they trying to, to kill me. So, anyway. So, they went. I guess they went up that one with all the groceries. And I'm saying it was like bags and bags and bags of groceries. And so, I, when I heard the ding dong, ah, brief... Half awake, went to the door that everyone actually uses. They said, oh, that's weird. Okay, I guess I don't know. Bye. And I was, oh, good night. And then I didn't actually go back to sleep, but I right. went about my business, you know. Yeah, of course. Uh, half asleep. And then I said, after I'd kind of awoken after like an hour, I said, hmm, that was super weird. What's the deal with that? And so I looked around again, went down to the mailbox, and I said, oh, and nothing at the mailbox. So I was like, okay, very early, whatever. I said, hmm. No. And then as if going through the closet to Narnia, I walked up my the path to the actual front door, which nobody ever uses. Lo and behold, Henry, a plethora, a plethora of groceries. Man. And I said, oh, this is it's okay. I said, this will probably be kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well. Yeah. I haven't had anything too exciting to to talk about oh first off we should well say, it'd be hard to match the excitement of what i just that's very true i just imparted. first off we should say new music buds is up now yeah so check that out our which is our our secondary show or second show other than that today i everyone at my coffee shop was asked to return their key just temporarily just because the, the hours are changing and they and they want mm-hmm. to make sure everything is in hmm. tip top shape. So I, 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 I right. <laughs> so so I Whatever. so I ventured out into the into Did the wild, walk? yes. And I had my mask on, my homemade mask. What's yours look like? Mine has Irish themes on it. <laughs> so <laughs> what? what does that mean? Like like, I, like beer I, and, pre- and snakes? Like what is it Irish themed? Like it's like an Irish painting. And clover. Yeah. Irish painting. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Okay. Just yeah, it's, it's just like a like old fashioned like just I mean it's it's I guess it's from an I a uh, real painting, but it's okay. a tea towel. So Gotcha. Yeah. A real Irish painting. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been to Ireland. I have. It's it's a, a lot of fun. That's good. When did you go? When I was in middle school. Where'd you just every was it fun was it like interest? I mean, yeah. Yeah. It was we went to England and Ireland, so it was quite a trip. Wow. Yeah. Anyhow, I yeah, I ventured out and saw some people wearing masks mm-hmm. very smartly. And then I saw others walking Not down a- walking down the, the main street right past each other, no mask. Yeah. One of them had a, a small boy with him, young boy. No, what? no mask. Just walking right past groups of like people. So it was quite a jarring, jarring experience. But hey, I I made it back safely. <laughs> I had my mask on. So, Ugh, why'd you tell me the little kid didn't have a mask? Well, that upsets me. Well, hopefully, it, maybe it'll help wake some people up. You know. So your mask? No, they're saying. Oh, you know, what? maybe if I if I haven't already, I'm gonna make sure to have a mask for. Oh. I'm with I'm with you now. Yeah. I'm with you now. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I typed in Irish paintings, and it's just a bunch of green squares that are coming up. Maybe it's because my internet is slow, but. Uh. <laughs> hmm. 
I'll have to s- funny. send a photo and put or, or, up, or I'll put it yeah. on the Instagram. How about that? Okay. Yeah. So I can't see it. Perfect. Well, you can still look at it. Can't. All right. I don't know how, but I'll figure it out for you. <laughs> oh, this one looks like that place in Inception. You'll have to be more specific. <laughs> the the cliff thing in Inception oh, where nice. they they come out of the water, but yeah. not in the James Bond kind of way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, <laughs> oh, and uh, also, I've mentioned it recently, but there is a whole new line of, of Film Buds merchandise on the FilmBuds dot oh, com, yeah. including a new sticker that Chloe designed herself. Yeah. And some people have bought that already, so thanks. <gasps> yeah. No way. Yeah. And I oh. mentioned also mentioned to Chloe, it's not up yet, but I am working on a hashtag Listen at Home hoodie, Film Buds hoodie. That will be up there probably soon, and I, I'm going to try and do it to where all the donations will go right to charity for some kind of COVID-19 uh, fundraiser. So keep an eye out for that. Should be up soon. All right. Well, Chloe, should we jump in? Yes. Cool. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get into our first review, which is Fleabag Live. And we don't have a clip of the play, but we do all play a clip from the, the regular okay. show, just so you can get an idea in case you're unfamiliar. Make so. sure it's season one. Oh, I will. Okay. <laughs> so take a listen. You know that feeling when a guy you like sends you a text at two o'clock on a Tuesday night asking if he can come and find you? And then you open the door to him like you always forgotten he's coming over. Oh. Oh my god, definitely not. That does nothing for you. What? These are my clothes, Boo. I've been wearing these all day. It's really not that bad. It's really oh, what are you sorry. I love you. You got them all by the balls, causing waterfalls. I didn't beat you. She used to be our godmother. But then their parents split up. Mum died. You really are very good looking. Thank you. Very. Thank you. Very. <laughs> Thank you. It's been really nice to spend the day with a normal family. Okay, so Fleabag Live. Oh, God. Let's see. Stars was written. Stars Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. So I guess it's National Theater Live Fleabag. I guess that's that's how it is on IMDb. But it's directed by Vicki Jones and Tony Gretsch Smith. And it's it's written by Phoebe Waller Bridge and also stars Phoebe Waller Bridge. And the synopsis is a rip roaring look at some sort of woman living her life. <laughs> okay, no, I need to start that over. That no, is absolute Keep going. I love it. I'm not laughing no, at you, I'm laughing at the thing. No, no, it's I I've completely butchered this. So okay. okay. A rip roaring look at some sort of woman. Living her sort of life <laughs> with family and friendships under strain and a guinea pig cafe struggling yeah. to keep afloat, mm-hmm. Fleabag suddenly finds herself with nothing to lose. What? Okay. I like it. Yeah. She finds herself with nothing to lose. Yeah. I don't know if... I want to know where they took that one from because that's totally yeah. different than all other IMDb things. I feel like you know at, that we have a history with hating the IMDb. Yes. Summaries here, synopses, but yeah, that one was particularly weirdly bad. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they wanted to sound like Phoebe Waller Bridge would have written that, but I don't think she would have. Yeah. But I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Hashtag I doubt it. Tony Shalhoub, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right, well, this has been... This has been turned into a major hit show that's on Amazon Prime right now. Two seasons. And, yeah, with a, a third one coming soon, right? Or am I wrong there? Mm, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. Well, Probably. Yeah. Yeah, now, for me, I just watched the first season for the first time this past week. Before or after? So, before. 
oh, so you watch the thing, then you watch the stage thing, and you're yeah. that's where you're at. You don't know yeah, who Hot I, Priest yet. No. Okay. I've heard a lot about the show, and so I me. really liked, <laughs> yeah, and I really liked the sh- the first season of the series. It's so smart, and it humanizes the characters in such a real way, which I, I really appreciated, and yeah. Phoebe Waller Bridges writing voice I thought was very unique. Yeah. All of that I really, really liked. And I think with Fleabag Live, I liked it, but I prefer it in a TV form. Sure. I liked watching her do the solo performance, but if I had the choice, I think I would still stick with the show because some of the humor works a little bit better when there's other people to bounce off of. Definitely. As well as the the direction and editing can help. Mm-hmm. Steer you. Yeah. Yeah. So. Plus well, you Chloe... just have a lot more because it's like one's. It's hard exactly. Because she's not a particularly likable character. And so you're spending an hour and a half with her as opposed to like a long time, you know, far longer time. I guess. Right. Clovo can't do math. Six times an hour. No. How long is the show? I don't know. About six hours probably, right? So th- n- n- there's six episodes. Yeah. 30 minutes each. So I think it's about three hours-ish. Maybe well, three and a half. Well, not if you watch it on half speed. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, you're spending a lot more time with yes. her in the TV show. So that makes things a bit easier, I think, when it's a, you know more i guess realistic person yeah yeah i like about it too but yeah well chloe what did you, what's your background with fleabag well henry as you know <laughs> the <laughs> thing i pride myself on more than anything else in the whole world and you can back me up on this for years i've been saying watch phoebe waller bridge nobody knows who she is but she's about to blow up and mm-hmm. I was right. I love being right. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm happy for her, but also I love being right. So, yeah. anyway, um, but I've watched like everything she's done. She's written other stuff too. Which, if you watch the other stuff, like uh, she has a show called Crashing, for instance, she yeah. always gives herself like the bad person role, which is like a popular thing. I think a lot of writers do that. Um, right. But it's a wholly different. She's not like uh, she's not Wes Anderson over here. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think mm-hmm. of a better TV example, but she's not like she she doesn't have uh, her voice can change can stay with her throughout different like motifs, if you will. Like Crashing's a totally different type of show. There's no like fourth wall breaking that kind, which is a big thing in Fleabag. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So she also plays a, quite an annoying character in that. But there's annoying characters in everything, but it's a completely different show. And she's right. doing the new Bond movie. Like, that's obviously... She Wouldn't is, Wouldn't you yeah. love that if James Bond turned to the camera and was like, again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again? <laughs> That'd be funny. I couldn't think of a better James Bond joke for that because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not an expert in that's that. That's fine, Just, yeah. Again? That's fine. <laughs> or if Judy Dench popped up and he went... To the on to it. I thought she died. No, <laughs> that'd be good. Well, now uh, to go back for a second, yes, Chloe. Please. In terms of you being right, is this better or was it better with Joaquin Phoenix and Joker and bathing his mother? Which was a better feeling for you? Ah! Well, Henry, well, Henry, that's a great question. That's a, that is a great question. I think, I think I might have to ponder because I think my answer could truly, uh, give a lot of voice to find, uh, who I am as a person. Right. Which type of right I prefer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Two very big moments in your yeah, life. And one's noble, kind of like, hmm, you know? <laughs> Hold my head a little higher. <laughs> then the other is like, I tried oh boy. to tell you. I tried to tell you. You know? 
Yeah. So. Ah, that's cool. a good question. Wow. I think that beauty can be found in in all spaces. Um, mm. Basically, I enjoy being right no matter the circumstance. Of course. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Who don't? Yeah, right? I'm just kidding. That's not totally true, but. And then I'm looking forward to her new show on HBO, mm. um, Run, with uh, my two of my f- favorites for very different reasons. One being Donald Gleason, a classic. I love his, I was going to say discography, and that's not it. I love <laughs> his discography. And then Mary Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> who I always accidentally make fun of. So, right. Mary Weaver, you're great. Don't let anyone tell you different. <laughs> but uh, have you heard of the show or watched the trailer or anything? I've heard of it. I have not watched the trailer yet, though. It, it doesn't help you much. The trailer gives you a, just about nothing, but I'm sure it'll be really mm. good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this also talking about Fleabag Live, and I guess we'll talk about it a little bit in oh hello on broadway oh hello but one I- yeah one, one, <laughs> one issue as i'm sure many people might have is watching a theater performance that's filmed isn't just isn't nearly as dynamic engaging or dynamic as watching it in person so while i do like getting to see this play it's like a, a, it's like a weird limbo yeah it it still doesn't fully bring me in. Mm-hmm. That being said, she still works really well on her own. Absolutely. And there's and the the, the voiceovers or the narration mm-hmm. going on around her that works really well, which is takes a lot of guts because doing that one person play doesn't always work, or it could easily go wrong in a lot of ways as we see in many tv shows so they love to make jokes about bad one one person plays but yeah phoebe waller bridge tells them all to suck it but i was i'm a deep fan so i was sad i was like waiting to hear hugh dennis's voice and it wasn't there Mm. you know that kind of thing Hmm. but i think uh uh why am i blanking on whatever i'm uh what's her name my brain's telling me bubbles that's not her name best friend's name i think best friend's voice was the same Okay. Come crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> pretty sure. <laughs> pretty right. sure it's well, the same guinea pig for both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, talking about... Now, going into the show, I didn't know anything about the death of the friend. Mm-hmm. So all of that was pretty eye-opening. But in a, it, it was done really well, I thought. Oh, yeah. And you can see through her performance how much it eats her up, especially with how it plays out. Are and you talking show or or stage or both? More so the the TV show. Okay. Now, it, it works well in the, the, the play, but again, having seen the show beforehand and having mm-hmm. a person there to look at, mm-hmm. it works a li- little gotcha. bit better for me. Okay, but- I didn't even think about... I, haven't, I didn't even think about that. So that's yeah. a really good point because I already had that in my mind. Because obviously, I saw this sh- the TV show before the uh, stage play. So very fair enough. I was picturing everybody, which threw me off at some points. Like, um, why is his name Harry? I don't know the boyfriend. Mm. I I don't know the dis- his name. The I can't. description is holy. I don't know. Why I'm blanking on other names. So I'm really sorry. But the description of him in the play is wholly different from the TV show. It's like when you read a book and watch a movie or whatever. But mm-hmm. it didn't really bother me. It just I kind of liked it. But yeah, I hadn't thought about that. That I already had that uh, heuristic, <laughs> right? Those availability heuristics, if you will. So mm-hmm. yeah, that that definitely could make it not as good, I guess, if you haven't seen the TV show. Right. But I'm not bad. I'm not mad about it. I wouldn't. But you're right. I wouldn't. I don't know if I found it super. It definitely, it definitely was not more entertaining or whatever as the show for reasons you can imagine. Like we said, like a, because you either have a play where it's like you're in the environment, like it's all a micro a thing, right? <laughs> Never to be done exactly the same way again, and the, all the people mm. in the and then and then you have a TV show which makes up for that with like you know 
you can look over here, you can look over there, shots and beautiful and music and blah, 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 blah right? But then yeah. you're in this weird middle place, which is like, oh, this is cool. Like, for <laughs> instance, I saw um, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, as we all know. <laughs> Famously, I saw that performance uh, on stage, and then they showed it, at, and it was the new one with Daniel Radcliffe, etc. And then okay. they showed it at... Um, one of our local movie theaters that likes to be artsy and stuff. And it was tickets were super expensive, but what can you do? And I saw it with my mom because I was like, mama, look, this was like the best day of my life. I met one of my heroes. And look, and now we're watching this together. That's so beautiful. But obviously the vibe was a lot different watching it on a screen than being there. But it was nice for other reasons. And it's just kind of one of those things. But also, right. if it's what you have afforded to you, then it's what you're going to watch. Like, yeah. Like, it's really cool if you live in England, you can take a train and they're a lot better over there about appreciating the arts and stuff. And I know there's some of it here, but it's just a totally different world. Like, in England, you know, they do student shows, whatever, like, constantly. So you can always get tickets for like $10 or whatever, which hopefully is accessible for, you know seeing harry potter but that's not why yeah. i went it's not why you go but you take my point but um like even my mom in college got to or high school i think probably college got to like sit on the stage with like anthony perkins performing and that kind of stuff oh wow like, like that's just that's like the cool deal so this is kind of like that's kind of the intention i feel like right i totally yeah. went off not what i was going to talk about but there we no, go you're fine because having I guess we talked about it a little bit on the the show when Henry Wilkinson and I went and saw Les Mis mm -hmm. recently. It's being there and being with the audience and with the actors being right there the in front of you. The collective gasp. Exactly. That worked so, so much better, I think, than if I had just watched that a filmed long... version of it. Okay, you know. Yeah. And I think it's the, the same thing with this. Now, I, now I would love to see the the show in person and then that may add a whole other level but... i would have loved to see russell crowe in in phoebe waller bridge's one woman show <laughs> huh yeah <laughs> interesting <laughs> <sighs> anyhow even just talking more about the show i guess all of the characters are oh first off olivia coleman incredible that's like, another it's... one that's another one I called a long time ago. I just want everyone, probably not in <laughs> in America. I called her in America, okay? Because I know Peep Show and stuff has been, I know she's been around. But for way before she got her Oscar, I said, one of my very favorite actresses is Olivia Coleman. So underappreciated. And yeah. here she is, and that <laughs> makes me happy. But yeah, she is amazing. Watch Broadchurch, everyone. Oh, yeah. And we've been watching Flowers. Oh, that. so good. Yeah, yeah. She's amazing. Oh, Flowers is so good. On Netflix. You should mm -hmm. you should y'all should take a yeah, listen, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. But also, my favorite, this is a cool, good tie in, as you know I like to do. Um in the Matthew McConaughey true detective wall sense. But speaking of <laughs> Olivia Coleman, Broadchurch, my favorite recorded play ever is The Hamlet with David Tennant. At the Royal oh, yeah. Shakespeare Company. Sure. Um, because it's when they recorded the performance, they did it in such a way that it was, it was more, it was, uh, how do I say? It was filmed like the, uh, like American Sun. So like they were doing it like this is a movie more than recording a play kind of deal, right? Right. But. It had a little more of the, like, and I could be wrong because it could just be a really good set, but I don't know if that was the set, the American Sun set was the same set as the show itself. I don't feel like it was, but could have been. Hmm. But in any case, they filmed the, the David Tennant Hamlet on, and Patrick Stewart. They filmed it on the actual stage and everything, but they had tons of cameras and lots of cuts and close-ups and whatever like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they went outside for a minute to Ooh, take wow. a grave. It was very exciting, <laughs> adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> but well, in terms of just talking about the 
the show, the dynamics between I think the the sisterhood or sister dynamic is very compelling, and also the troubled relationship with her father. Mm-hmm. All of that works, and it's so it's pretty subdued, but it, it works. It hits hard, I think, in a lot of ways. Yeah, and and I guess it it's maybe more of a just a British trope. I I don't know, but I guess it it takes a lot from The Office, where it can have very dark humor, but then really balance that with a lot of pretty heavy emotion at times. Yeah, which I think and, is why I like British humor. As yeah. you know, it's my wheelhouse. I think it's just like more honest, right? And you know, not like. I don't know. When I think of American comedy, I low key think of like Amy Schumer and stuff. Just like sure, look yeah. how progressive, like liberal we are. Because I'm a woman, I'm talking about that. But it's not like. But what they're talking about is built in earnest. Like it's actually the funny stuff you would say with your family, mm. and you would never say in public. And that's why it's funny and like yeah. touching. Yeah. I really want to watch season two, Chloe. I can't wait. Henry, hot priest. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to keep saying it. <laughs> it's it's um, Andrew Scott, in case you don't know that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's very good. I happen to like season two way more than season one, but it might just be because season one was like so sad, like so tragic. Season two is not yeah. as tragic, which I also really okay. like. Right. Like it's definitely the same show, but it's a new vibe. Mm-hmm. You know? New sh- yeah. New show who dis. <laughs> yeah. No. The show it, Yeah. The old the old flea bag can't come to the phone right now. Sure. Like killed sure, her. Sure. Or cause you killed her. I don't know what that <laughs> I don't know. Taylor Swift. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, season two is I like season two more. The show plays in a pretty it plays comfortably within a genre, like a familiar feel and style, but it does its own thing. Very Almost Greta Gerwig esque, you know. It kind of takes pieces okay. from what what you know, mm-hmm. and then goes off in a whole new direction. I can see that. Yeah, sure, that's true. Yeah, but again, yeah, and uh, to say again, what I find so impressive about it is because it's clearly it's very defined, but it's not all she does. Like I said, like exactly, like crashing is really cute. Like she has a lot of little. And obviously, we haven't seen the James Bond thing yet, but obviously, it's not going to be the same. So, I find that really impressive that she can fit that all in into each other. And I like that, you know, she has yet to name a character Phoebe, because I really don't like that. Like, this is my own thing. Even, like, the Mindy project, like... Uh, oh, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 you know? At least yeah. the Dick Van Dyke show, they call it the Dick Van Dyke show, but his name of the show is Rob Petrie. Somebody explain that to me. <laughs> I don't know, but I prefer it. You know what I mean? You're also kind of yeah. limiting yourself. Like the show, I really like um, Miranda. Her mm. name's Miranda. Now what? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Which I get because it's like a passion. Pre- like you're a lot of those. It's like, and I don't know Phoebe Waller-Bridge's whole life, but um, there's a lot of those kind of shows. It's taking a lot from your truth, which is why they name it. I think themselves it's like, well, if I have one project I can do, it's going to be this because it's like my heart, my story, right? But it's like, you can still change your name. Just do your middle name or something. I don't know. <laughs> but. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, yeah, I love her. I think I was. Ha- but, you know, I also don't watch. Like, I should be clear. It's not my usual. I know I come off really snooty and stuff. But it's not my usual thing to watch, uh, you know, one one person play record. Yeah. But, um, like, I don't even watch stand up, really. Even though I. Yeah, really me neither. Like- I love I love me some comedians and everything, but it takes a lot of effort for me to watch. Like I watched the James A. Caster ones on Netflix because I was like, "That's my guy. I'm not not gonna watch it." <laughs> Come on, mm-hmm. I'm just glad he's up here. But um, that's another one I call Jack Whitehall. Y'all can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> and James Corden, but that's gone south because now he's annoying. He used to be, but anyway. Yeah. So. But no, I, I get that. I'm the same way with stand-up comedy. Yeah, so like I watched this, but I was also like drawing while I was watching it. Yeah. Which is kind of my I, I was I was designing that hoodie yeah. <laughs> while I was doing it. So. Yeah, because you really can just listen to it, I guess, not to mm. disrespect her. Like she's acting and she's good at it, but also, and I've said this before, I like don't love stage acting. It's why I like movies more than plays is because I don't like the 
make sure the mezzanine can see it. Like, you know what I mean? Sure. Not for me, but she was still good, but definitely better in the show. And yeah, there are a lot of things. I My favorite thing, like I said, is a movie that's like a play. Like we were talking about Hateful Eight last week. But mm-hmm. it's this very delicate, like, tightrope, I guess. You yeah. Know? I'm, I'm picky. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I wasn't yeah. mad at it. And it also gave me, it was cool to see, like, the bones. that Because ri- I've, I've, like, read it, but I haven't seen it performed or heard the original you know obviously and so it was cool to see like the bones of what became a show that i really liked that then became like a phenomenon which is really yeah humble brag but like a phenomenon which is like really cool so she yeah. she done did that thing and she done did it well and i'm not mad i watched it you know what i mean mm-hmm. but it was weird it wasn't like like if i if I had no, if the show, if I hadn't seen the TV show and I hadn't really liked Phoebe Waller-Bridge or whatever, I don't think I would have been very satisfied, though, if I'm honest and really thinking about it. Yeah, that's fair enough. But I don't have that thing of, like, if you, if I, oh, uh, what's, I was watching something and they made that horrible thing about, like, oh, <laughs> wait, that was Tiger King, dude, there's something stupid. Uh, Louis, <laughs> <laughs> Makes Louis sense. Thoreau, you know Louis Thoreau? Yeah, I love him to pieces. He did a little thing with Tiger King before it was cool because Louis Thoreau's my guy. And um, oh yeah, you watched the Scientology thing of Louis Thoreau, right? Oh, he did. Yeah, my Scientology he's got glasses, movie. Little, yep. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah. So, um, but he did a thing, and he was like, again, this is this is tangential. So if you want to do that little thirty second skip ahead thing, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you can't do it. Sorry, Henry. But That's okay. um, <laughs> but Louis Thoreau was like, "Do you think they'd like? Wh- why do you think they should be here, or not in the wild? Basically, right?" And Joe Exotic was like, "Is they can't miss them? They didn't know." <laughs> and he was like, "Do you think a person in a wheelchair wants wants to walk?" <laughs> like, I was like, "What?" <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, I guess I don't have. My uh, point there, somewhere in there, if you look around and take away all the god awfulness of uh, that statement, is um, but I don't have the opportunity to have seen to experience the play without my knowledge of the TV show. So I don't know if I would have liked it more or not. But I have that to compare to. I also I like the TV show more just because there's a lot more to it. But yeah, but I also I haven't seen, agree. I haven't seen the TV show. I only watched the first season once. I watched the first season twice, but I only watched the first season once because it was like. Hard to watch. As funny as it yeah. is, for some, it's very poignant, which I think is part of why it's so successful, I guess. But um, but I only watched it once, and it was like years ago, like probably three, I guess three years ago, maybe. So I can't remember it that well, but I can. But you take my, I'm done. Don't worry. Cut me off. Cut no, me you're off. Fine. No, you're fine. Cut me you're off, fine. Henry. You're, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. She's losing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, out of five, I'll go four. It's a four for me. Okay, this is very specific. All right. Uh, Always is. Well, I guess so. Well, okay. So the first thing came to mind. You're at a restaurant and it's nice. You're sitting outside and everything, right? And your waiter's like, "Fine, that is nice, right?" Sure. And you're there. I'm there with my madre, who loves lemon in her water, right? Right. We don't ask for like lemon slot, like we don't ask for or whatever. And so it gets there and you make sure to say, uh, I don't need a straw, thank you, whatever. You get there and it's a cold, nice, nicely designed glass of water with ice um, on this uh, temperate day, hot day. Um, but there's no lemon slice for oh. either of you. <laughs> So it's still it's still very satisfying, cool, cool water and everything. Yeah, you know, in it, but in an easy, easy to hold the glass and everything. But there's just just no lemon. There's no lemon slice. You know? None of that zest. No lemon you know? slice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we can move on. Is Let's it a phobia? Our... Is it a phobia when you squeeze the lemon and the little, you know, bits of lemon? The little stringy, th- the little bits go into your the, drink. Is there these, a phobia of that? Someone have that? 
These days, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a real thing. Let but us I know not... at the film buds at <laughs> gmail podcast dot com. You got it. <laughs> but <laughs> I've not I've not heard of it myself. I'm so. wondering, Henry. It's not these days. That is so silly. People always say that. It's just people feel more comfortable talking about stuff. Yeah, in terms of it being known, that's what I mean. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People had stuff way back when. Yeah, but they had yeah. it. People were. Some people could like when uh, like people always make fun of uh, gluten free people. Yes. Yeah. You go drink up some Monsanto. Tell me how you feel. Make fun of gluten free people. Dear Lord, yeah. I don't understand that. I don't understand when people are mean to people about stupid stuff like that. Why do you care if somebody? I mean, they're insecure. Chloe. I'm not saying that if you make fun of gluten free people, you're basically making fun of gay marriage. But I am. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Why do you care? I guess. Sure. More bread for you. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 move on. Let's get to our retro review of Oh Hello oh, on hello. Broadway, <laughs> which is on Netflix. And we do have a clip. You can tell I'm really the audience for that show. Yes. <laughs> take a clip or take a take, take that a listen. Clip. <laughs> take a cl- <laughs> take a listen. We love the great traditions of the theater, <laughs> and that is why we plan to pay homepage to them tonight. For example, the one-sided phone call. Ah, the one-sided phone call. This is very good. This is when a character makes a phone call, but they do it in a very stagey way where they repeat the phone call information to the other characters. First get a telephone no one would have in real life. Oh, hello. (laughs) Then, please, do way too much business with the phone. Really show the audience you've been working with the prop all week. (laughs) And then, ladies and gentlemen... A one-sided fun call. Ravi, a melodramatic wash, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, Hello on Broadway okay. came out in 2017. Rule of threes. I'm done now. Don't worry. Yeah. And it's directed by Michael John Warren and Alex Timbers. And it's written by Nick Kroll and John Mulaney and also stars Nick Kroll and John Mulaney. As well as a surprise guest. Two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, two surprise guests. How dare you? And, well, now this one, similar to Fleabag. Now, I had not even heard of Oh, Hello mm. before. So this well, whole... Well, Henry, that makes one the, of us. <laughs> so this, this, the Comedy Central show and then this Broadway play, I had no knowledge of. So it was, it, it was all new to me. Well, Chloe, you want to start off since you're more familiar with it? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You go first. It's All also right, a well, podcast, you know. Shout yeah. out. Yeah. But listen to us instead. Yeah. We're 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 more pleasant crotchety old men than those two. So. Mhm. Maybe with S- Henry. What's we up? Get, no. I was trying to think of how we we could be them, but not really. I was saying one's a Jewish uh but that was the end of the list that was all i have okay so this people show think, is... people think the the jewish one's kind of annoying well and people think john mulaney is like adorable so maybe it fits <laughs> okay <laughs> the the show similar to fleabag live at first when it started i was a little little you were hesitant un- Word? hesitant just because i didn't like being so distant from it all even if it was mm. well performed i i felt like i wasn't really engaged in it yeah and but they interact whether, with the audience as well yeah but whether it's through the direction or maybe there's just more going on i really liked it by the end i was really enjoying it wow it, it took it takes a little while to get used to the style especially mm-hmm. have it being something that you're watching, not experiencing in, in person. Yeah. But I thought John Mulaney and Nick Kroll were perfect together, and it was very consistently funny, and the surprise guests are a nice detour. Lemon. Yeah. <laughs> Lemon yeah. slice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought it was very well performed, well designed, well written. So I, I was really liking it a lot, Chloe. Yeah. I love how 
and because again they're kind of uh not the most uh i mean you know me i'm basic i like little sweet little sweeties you yep. know but um i mean they're funny and also again you know that underneath the uh, cardigans they're very nice humans in real life so that kind of makes yes. it easier um because it's what was i saying it's like a like they're kind of like playing pretend Right. Whatever. I like really like that kind of deal because I think there's something sweet, like an extra little piece of heart about it. But um, I also like how engaging it was. One, because like there's a little bit of interaction with the audience, even though you're not in the audience. But also, it's like very meta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's it's like a play within a play. Number one. But then they also go over with you like the rules of plays and like you know they mess around with that kind of stuff, which I like. I love in this kind of atmosphere because, you know, this is like, this is like um, the silly version of waiting for, however you want to pronounce it, Gal Gal Gadot, but um, oh, yeah, <laughs> but it's just yeah, it's really fun. I don't, know, I love it. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, and they do a it, lot of stuff together. Like we said, you've seen Big Mouth. Yep. Which and they're is a, they're an, an inter- acquired taste, like yeah, everything they do. Yeah, they're an interesting pair, just purely from a personality point of view. And but like they, us! <laughs> yeah, they, they, exactly. Yeah, but they work really well together, and they have very good chemistry. Yeah, and you can tell how much they're enjoying doing the play. Yeah, that's which what makes is, it so much fun. Yeah, that's what makes it so much fun, and they clearly like trust each other a lot. And yeah, they're. It's difficult to say. They're, uh, I mean, it's why they're successful, I guess, is they're so good at what they do that they just have a kind of a built-in level of professionalism. It's right. Like they respect their audience or whatever, but they can still play around. You know, like at the end when Nick Kroll like, goes and is like, bye, and they just like, you know, again, like riffs with the audience. Mm-hmm. But it's totally worth your time to watch, even if you're not in the in that environment, which would make it kind of like exciting. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 totally. I, th- yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> trying to think, there wasn't very much at all that I didn't like. I th- probably the only thing would be the tuna obsession <laughs> that maybe goes. <laughs> I love it. Now I, I don't mind. It in theory, it's this, and yeah, at, it's at times humor. I think I prefer that that you don't so much. Yeah, it, it's more so maybe a little overdone towards the end. I didn't mind it as much earlier on, where it's more minimal. <laughs> the and, tuna obsession. Yeah, I love but, for anyone who hasn't seen it. Yeah, the but when obsession. the but like when the the curtain and the the monster stuff happens, I wasn't as crazy about that. Not to say it was bad. But that's something I maybe could have had a little bit less of because I think it's best when it's just the two of them together talking about life and riffing on each other. But that's really just a personal thing because it worked more for you. So that's okay. Yeah. It's like, have you ever seen Comedy Bang Bang? Yes. I love... Do you like Comedy Bang Bang? I've only watched a little bit of it, so I... I love comedy. Ba- Gemma jokes that I like love stoner humor without having to do any of that makes the, sense. The things <laughs> I'm just already there, <laughs> right? Yeah, so it's like it's kind of that, but it's I think it, it's more accessible. I think than the rest of that. Like, have you ever seen the Kroll Show? No. Yeah, I think I. I no offense. I don't want to offend anyone. I think the smaller piece of the pie chart, if you're saying, are you a John Mulaney person or a Nick Kroll person, I might be the smaller, might be the little bit that's not Pac-Man, the negative space that's sure. a Kroll person over a Mulaney person. Okay. But uh, I think he's great. Yeah, and I like that he got to be the sweet one in the show. Yeah. You know? I mean, they're both... They both they both have their cons, but <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> overall, but yeah, they're they're both pretty multifaceted actors or or performers. Yeah, Nicole does a lot of uh, serious roles as well. Yeah, 
And he can pull them. He's good. He can pull them off. Yeah. My favorite of his is probably still the douche in Parks and Rec. Well, but I like him a lot in Big Mouth as I do John Mulaney. And yeah, they're very, very diverse with their choices and they do, they do it well. It doesn't feel like they're trying to make a point. It's just, it seems like they're actually interested in having a diverse filmography, you know? So yeah, I would say so far Nick Kroll is more diverse than John Mulaney, but I know it's a different vibe. And he was also head writer on a TV show for a long time, which kind of, Obviously, as, you know, where Nick Kroll kind of did his own thing. But, um, yeah. And then, did you ever watch that short-lived, um, which I liked, the John Mulaney show with Martin Short? No. It was cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's old now. I don't know. Right. It's old now, but I, I'm a big, well, not anymore, but I, I've seen, like, well, bar the recent seasons, if I'm honest, I've seen like every episode of Saturday Night Live several times up mm-hmm. to like 2014, probably 2015. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah, after all the last biggies left, like after, um, you know, Will Forte, Bill Hader, Kristen, uh, yeah, what's her name? What's her name? Oh, oh, Kate her- McKinnon? No. Uh, what's her name? Bridesmaids. I'm totally blanking. Kristen Wiig? Yeah, Kristen Wiig. Oh, yeah. You. I said Kristen. You said Kate <laughs> McKinnon, who's also still on the show. After they all left, I was like, but then I tried. But I just don't think, I like, I, I've told you, I don't like Kate McKinnon. I don't, I don't like any really. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, so I'm a big fan of SNL, and that's where John Mulaney was for a long time. Mm-hmm. He kind of popped in out. I don't know why he never did Weekend Update, but who am I? Don't know. That had nothing to do with uh, what we're talking about, <laughs> but I'm so sorry. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> the the guest star, again, I won't spoil it because it is a pretty fun, for any, any comedy fans, again, it's SNL. really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that section purely from how much you can see Nick Kroll and John Mulaney loving who they're talking yeah, to. Yeah, the reverence. In that, in, that, in that format is so great to watch. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's got a lot. As weird as it is, it's got a lot of heart because it's it just, does. It's the kind of thing where like, it's almost like on the film buds. Nope, this is the film buds on the music <laughs> buds, which I just realized is a funny yeah. Because of your, your butt. Anyway, so... <laughs> oh, wait, that's all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Very fine. Um, what? Yes. Okay, so I was saying, so in, in the Music Buds thing, we were saying, uh, so my favorite, there's a video because of uh, one of my favorite songs because it's filmed for The Killers Did Live at Royal Albert Hall. And one of my favorite parts is when Bram Flowers like realizes everyone's singing a song or whatever, just that kind of feeling that's so lovely it's kind of like the same thing i think we're like yeah they're like oh look where i am this is crazy <laughs> look yeah. who i'm talking to so when i looked at this crazy like mm-hmm. that kind of thing yeah so very pleasant it's not too long or anything you know what i mean yeah it was maybe and then you're out yeah it was maybe maybe a touch long a or touch? or it was i didn't like the opening bit where they walk tw- yeah i didn't like that as much i was like when the, the curtains opened and you saw the set, I was like, okay, I wish we had maybe spent five minutes doing an intro and then the rest was there. I didn't need as much introduction to it. Yeah. So if I could cut anything, I would probably trim that first section down. Me too. It might come from a sense of like nervous, like insecurity almost. Cause again, it yeah. is like kind of niche. Yeah. So I'm trying to like, but it's basically like the two puppets from a, the Muppets come to life and Mm -hmm. have their have their safer ones (laughs) yeah yeah it's like that Mm -hmm. all right well anything else about oh hello oh hello i mean is the (laughs) best i don't know it's good i think it's worth a watch i don't know do you think it's worth a watch oh i think it is yeah i was very pleasantly surprised because again i knew nothing about it and it was you must have been that must have been a thing for you then. You must have said, what the heck is she having me watch now? 
Yeah. But it, it was okay, though. <laughs> Again, these unconventional choices are what work. Wow. So that, that means that if you are someone who ha- hasn't heard of it before, you can still enjoy it thoroughly. Yeah, I think you're either going to really like it or maybe not so much, mm-hmm. which is I could fine, see it, too. Like, I can yeah. see it really grating on a lot of people. Oh, yeah, for sure. And they'll be like, what the heck is this stupidness, ness, ness? Yeah. But it's like, um, Henry, we're both big fans of the show Vicious, the PBS show. Yes. I don't know. Is it PBS? I don't know. Whatever. The show Vicious uh, with Derek Jacoby and um, Sir Ian McCallan. Yeah. And also Ramsey from Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. but sweet. And also, uh, anyway, lots of good people are in it. But this is almost like that show on drugs that I've never done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a good way of putting it. And not allegedly, I really haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but you know All what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. All oh, right, well, I got it. Oh. I got a better one. That All doesn't right. have anything to do with drugs. Okay, great. Because it's not really our whatever. But it's like if. What was the other thing? I, oh, if Vicious had. Not a. It's all weird now. If you think about anything too much, it gets weird. But Vicious and. uh, What's that show everyone loves? Uh, Like Adventure Time and Rick, or Rick and Morty. If yeah. those two were a little peanut butter and jelly in a sandwich. Then you get oh hello, sure, yeah, yeah. Especially All with right. tuna, the tuna. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh <laughs> totally, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, out of five, Chloe, I'll go four and a half. Yeah, it's it's like, yeah, four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and <laughs> since since these days people are stuck at home and it's on Netflix, you should give it a watch. You know, you may love it. Yeah, worth yeah. the shot. Why not? Worth it. Yeah. All right. Well. Was, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well. Let, Cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get into our last review, which is American Son from 2019, and yeah. we do have a clip as well. So New take change. a listen. My son never came home. Look, I'm sure that he's going to turn up. First name? Jamal, J-A-M-A-L. Does he have any distinguishing scars, tattoos, gold teeth? Uh, does he go by any street names? He doesn't have a street name. There was an incident. What does that mean? Further information needs to go through Lieutenant Stokes. I don't know him personally. They told me that he's been paged to come down here immediately. I want to know now. Man, I'm glad you're here. She went from like zero to ghetto and nothing flat. It's okay. Everything's going to be fine. Where's our son? Okay, well, American Son came out in 2019, late 2019, and is also on Netflix. It's directed by Kenny Leon, stars Kerry Washington, Stephen Pasquale, Pascal, Jeremy Jordan, and Eugene Lee. And the synopsis is an estranged couple reunite in a Florida police station to help find their missing son. Well, Chloe, you you knew more about this as before than I did or or as, as with the others. So, what's your yes, background I with you to watch it is the short of that. Well, I didn't mind. I'm always up for something new. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I knew about the play because I'm, I keep up with such things, I guess. Um, uh, cause usually when I go to, when I'm fortunate enough to have the opportunity to go to New York, I like to try to go to a play and you have to plan ahead cause I do it the cheap ways usually, <laughs> which <laughs> take a lot of time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, um, or a lot of planning rather cause you have to go to this weird, you have to go this. There's two places you can go. If anyone's trying to get Broadway tickets for cheap, my friend Allison really clued me in on this. There's one place where you go, and it's like, that's the place everyone got, like Times Square or whatever. Everyone goes. Blah, blah. But then there's another place in the middle of nowhere where it's just this little thing. It says, Yes, what would you like? It's like, Oh my God. You're like, Thank you. 
And there's like never anyone there. It's very weird. So hmm. anyway, and they have the same amount. They have the same stuff. But like one is like, and then the other one maybe is for like New York. Re- maybe I shouldn't have let that out of the uh, out of the bag. But inside, you're all welcome. Yeah, inside scoop. Yeah, I don't know the address or the location in any way, except that it's near a lot of uh, office buildings and uh, a Starbucks. Oh, that's. So I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure most New Yorkers will know exactly where that is. Yes. Well, the New York, the New Yorkers, I'm sure already know about it. This is for okay All, clubs like us. Yeah. But um, in any case, so I already knew I knew about the play, and I was like, oh, that's that's sad, but I'm sure it's gonna be good. And I really like Carrie Washington. I think she's amazing. I never watched Scandal, so I can't jump I on that either. train. But yeah. Loved her in Psych and everything else I saw her in after that. <laughs> Django, of course. She's so she's really good. She's mm-hmm. really, really, really good. Um, but I heard Scandal was a stupid show, or at least a lot of people love it. So I'm sorry if I just offended you, but um, a show that I would not enjoy personally is, sure. is what I took away from what I saw, but and also what I was told right. by people who knew both of the show and myself. So anyway, so I was like, okay, this is gonna be good because Carrie watched it and I trust her taste. Also, important content, whatever. Blah, blah. And then I saw, I said, oh my god, because it was recommended to me because of other stuff I watch, I guess. Um, so oh my god, how exciting is this? Except, ooh, do I want to watch it? And it was like, <laughs> click. Because <laughs> it's very upset. Did you say this? Did you? Yeah, you said it's like very upsetting content, very relevant, very important. Right. Um. And I watched the movie, as did you, and I... I did. I thought it was extremely well done, and I hope it's not taken for granted. Like, I don't know how many people are going to watch it on Netflix, because, again, like, uh, I don't know, freaking self-care, whatever. People don't want to watch upsetting stuff, even if it's very helpful. Because I... It's very enlightening, even if you are... uh, Like, I, I... my intention always is to stay informed as to be as uh, helpful sure. in furthering the the societal journey to uh, justice. Yes. Uh, and obviously, globally and also in, in America specifically, and we're in the South, Henry. Yes, as we've we are. noted, um, like at my school, far more clans kids as we called them than jews for instance like so we kind of but this allows you into uh you hear conversations that i've never heard personally because obviously well not obviously but to you obviously but i'm (laughs) you know i'm (laughs) i'm not uh like both my parents are jewish and from new york or whatever like i you know i don't have the firsthand experience of you know an african-american person as much as i hope i can empathize or you know sympathize empathize in some way sympathize in others but you know it's not it's i am grateful for the opportunity to experience it and it's also really well done so it's like compelling which again as i always say i think is the best kind of filmmaking it's when it's um it you know is a good movie but also imparts a lot of important information and feeling and and not a punch you in the face you suck kind of way you know yeah well (laughs) no no i mean that's yeah to start with good yeah good way to put it yeah it reminded me of one of my favorite books is native son by richard wright and a lot of people don't like it because don't get me going. I know I picked a thing that's a very political, even though it shouldn't be political because it's human rights, but here we are. So, um. It's okay. The thing I like about Native Son that a lot of people don't is the main character. It's a. Richard Wright is one of, I think, the greatest American writers. Um. But one of the things about the book is it centers around. The big theme of the book is being, uh, black in america and this was book book was written a long time ago unfortunately it holds up very well but um what i liked about it the most is it wasn't they didn't make him the main character they didn't make him like a a 
saint who was uh, mistreated or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. He's not like a, you know, Jesus or somebody, you know, who's suppo- who's apparently, like, perfect and then they're done wrong and, like, oh, society's so tackled, we, uh, right? Like, he's a kid, first of all, so you know that. But he m- makes big mistakes. But the book highlights, and the book is far more extreme, like, w- if you listen to two seconds of the show, you know who I voted for. <laughs> so I think having marijuana possession should, you know, should not be an illegal thing by any means. But I'm talking about drugs a lot in this episode. You know what? That's, That's okay. okay. That's all right, Chloe. <laughs> We're here for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but as someone who's never intentionally taking part i obviously still appreciate the deep you just gotta read people okay you gotta chloe, read. chloe you're like leslie nope with the really good brownie you know there's no pot in it that happened to me oh yeah that's what i was saying that's the one sense. time it happened to me it, that is what happened yes <laughs> <laughs> so anyway that's really funny that's yeah so <laughs> um hashtag relatable so in any case um so, sorry, so Native Son, far more dramatic, but it's the same ideas that I really appreciate in a story. And almost like we were talking about with Fleabag is I think a story is so much more meaningful when it's real people and you truly have to contemplate, like, I know these people or I am these people or this kind of thing could happen to me, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like, I, I pissed somebody off because I said to them, like, I know you smoke marijuana and that is illegal and you've probably never, ever, ever worried about getting pulled over and getting shot because they're white or whatever. And I was like, so if you're not voting for who I'm voting for, then you need to just think about yourself, make a decision one way or the other. You know what I mean? Right. And so I think (laughs) I'm really going for it. But what I'm saying is a dynamic true story is what brings things up, makes you think about things. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's so much to it. There's nuance to everything. Nothing is, oh God, no pun intended. Everything is so deep. It's not everything. Things aren't black and white, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's what I really most appreciated about this piece. Again, much less, much less uh, uh, dramatic than Native Son, which I think is even better. But even in Native Son, what I liked about it was that he did things that were not good but it shows you why he or it shows you kind of how he got to the place where he felt like those things were necessary and then also uh his reaction escalated a lot because of what because of what he looked like meant for him in society Mm -hmm. you know and so this is a way more probably uh, in a lot of ways actually probably a better version of that because it's way more accessible and understandable like, we're talking about a kid who barely, you know, didn't really do anything wrong and so much happens from it. And also a lot of it, I don't think I'm spoiling anything. No. But, um, and a lot of it, you're with the parents, so you don't know. You don't uh, know what's going on with this boy. Could be nothing. Could be everything falls apart. Um, And so I, I love that you're in the, as it were, I really appreciate that you're in that spot too and we all know i like things with strong mothers of course as i, as I told nicole kidman i said nicole kidman, you always play that <laughs> and carrie washington's like another one of those because i just watched her in um what's that thing called low fires everywhere is that what's called i think so i don't think i'd be creative enough to make that name up i think it's called low fires fires everywhere huh. but uh anyway i'll let you go now henry because i talked a lot and i'll probably do some more you're fine Again, I, I had not heard of, of the play. I think you'd maybe mentioned it to me before, but I went in. I d- didn't even watch the trailer. I just went in. Went in cold. Nice. Nice. The trailer, I don't think even gives anything. I think the trailer's just like the first, like, Kerry Washington thing. Right. Where's my son? And then, like, that's it. But Right. I understand everything that you said, and I, I appreciate the movie for telling... Or discussing the ideas that it does or the issues that it, it does. But I thought as a movie, I did not think it was very good. What? I thought I found the the direction to be very heavy handed. And it reminded me a lot of 
And I look, I agree that it, it's important to be blunt when dealing with social issues, but it reminded me in the worst way of Crash, that movie with Sandra Bullock from the early. What? It's, it's very, I thought it was what? very telegraphed and not as a movie. It was in hitting emotional beats. It worked. But as a, a movie with a story, I did not think there was much there. What do you mean the direction? Just, just, just you mean the, the o- writing or the direction? Both. Just, just the overall ex. Now, Kerry Washington, I thought was great. So I, I don't have an issue with her. I thought he was great too. Yeah, yeah, he was good. None of the performances are are bad. I, I can go back on that. But purely just the overall execution of the story, I thought was very not not eye rolling because it's dealing with real issues, but very heavy handed in the the matter in which it. Uh, show, showed that, and I thought it was... I don't see that. I don't know what you mean by that. J- just just the, the, the writing and the dialogue and how, how it presents these, like... But that's all true. And I, I, we, I don't want to go into spoilers, but the way the characters interact is heightened for reasons that they explain in the piece. So the reason that a lot of stuff comes up makes sense because of the level of interaction those two characters had had prior to this moment in time. Right. Also, uh, yeah. And it, it's more so just, I, I thought it was very telegraphed with, with how it presents things. Like when you, you have the, after the discussions towards the beginning with the police officer and Kerry Washington about him asking if the son has any, gold teeth or tattoos yeah. not not that i had an issue with that but then you know it gets into the relationship with the father and of course Kerry washington is treated very very differently but right when the the husband pops up he's this uh this white fbi agent and of course the police officer treats him with like the utmost respect which again i'm not saying that doesn't happen that's it's uh, totally true i i i agree com- completely but i thought how that was directed was very overly on the nose to where it was not at all effective. I thought, I thought the ideas were there, but there's nothing that the execution was doing to make me really get invested other than having them be, be real issues. I thought the, the heavy handedness and the, the bluntness was too much at times for the, for the presentation. Well, what so. some see as heavy-handed based on their experience, others see as pretty realistic. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. It's no, and, and again, I don't think it's. I could see this this happening, right outside, you know, our door. I'm, I'm not saying that that it doesn't happen that way, but through that direction, it felt very f- calculated, but too too heavy. And, like and they not, were trying to fit in everything that could happen into this one scenario. Yeah, and, like and all it, the it, it, it wasn't doing it in in a real. I, I think from a a uh, theatrical perspective, I think it would work so much better because you're there in the room, you're seeing it happen. But from a f- cinematic standpoint, I thought it was very inert okay. and too on the nose to where it became. I don't want to say cliched because again, it's a real issue, but how, how the direction was done felt cliched, even though it shouldn't feel that way. So I thought there, there could have been a way that would have been more, more subdued and less like beating you over the head where the, a I, I, theater production would work better for communicating the story. So I, I don't think yeah. I, I needed to see it in the way that it's done as a film. I would say right. that. No, I don't think it's a terrible movie by any means. It's just that it was really lacking something for me from mm-hmm. from watching it as a movie. Also, why does it say at the beginning a television event? That just makes me think even they probably did it on TV. Yeah, but it <laughs> it, 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 it but I feel like that makes it okay. So this is a TV movie version, and it just makes it it. It cheapens it a little bit. I don't see why they needed to have that in there. I get. I mean, they maybe should have edited it out. It might have been for TV originally, and we. I, I think it. that because I mean, it is Netflix, so 
Uh, well, yeah, but Net- Netflix procures the like uh, uh, like a tons of um like in England again. Oh, I and think oh, yeah, a lot I'm, I'm not about communicating their art. They play movies on. I mean, uh, they play plays on TV a lot as like yeah. that kind of thing. And they're way better about kind of like uh, allowing this to the community as opposed to in America, for instance. I think Broadway is seen as like this, like right tour. Either either like oh plays like this one for like the hoity toit whatever, which I hate. That that's like kind of true sometimes. And then um, the other one is like oh, if I'm in New York, I have to see. Yeah, what came to mind was Cats, which is a little. Uh, <laughs> Uh, bad now like wicked like i have to go see it i don't even know if it's, i don't know freaking spongebob that's closed i know that sorry right y'all. but uh yeah, you take sh- my point yeah that that the uh, the reasoning for having it in there makes sense since it was not a original netflix movie at first but if it had like if they had if that had been put at the beginning of a like a four or five hour series that would be one thing but doing it an hour and a half long film i think that it makes it feel less substantial even though it should not be like when it's dealing with a real issue saying it's like a a television event makes it i don't know and again it's i don't mean to get hung up on that because that's not a a big thing at all that i had with the movie i'm like it to me it, it it did not feel very substantial from a cinematic standpoint sure thematically sure but everything else, not so much. I think it's important not to hold uh, movies which themes such as this to a higher standard because they have that like, like it shouldn't be a niche thing to think about. It should this should not be like a niche place of the art form where you're forced to pay attention to other walks of life because that's kind of like what movies were started as, kind of right. Like escapism is real too. But I don't think it should be, like, have to be, like, and that's another that's a problem. Like, I don't think it should, there's a, the air of, again, like I said, like, the hoity toy plays and, like, like at the Chelsea with the Florida Project, all those yeah. know, upper middle class, upper class, like, people were so uncomfortable watching the Florida Project that they, yes. like, walked out or whatever. And they communicated basically like that that was the case and stuff. And so like I think that's a thing to overcome. Um, putting putting things like this that deal with like real that point out social, political, economic, you know, it all intersect like things about society that need to change. Putting them in their own little box, I think, can be like a trivializing or even like fetishizing an issue, which like. Get out kind of highlighted by the whole like bingo, you know, they like, right, like, oh wow, like you're black, that's so great, like it's the same thing kind of deal, yeah. Uh, you know? well, I, well, I'm by no means putting it in its own, and, like speci- when people ask me, like, if, if ever they're like, if someone finds I'm Jewish, without a doubt, a majority of the time, vast majority of the time, and I, and this is, yeah. They say like, "Oh, do you know blah blah?" Which is like a Jewish person from freaking Transylvania. No, I don't mm-hmm. know them. Right? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. and this is, it might be the same kind of. De- I mean, not to. I don't want to again because I've been judged for even the way I look, the way I sure whatever. Yeah. And I don't want to put down anybody else, but I think it's fair to say like this movie might not feel so distant to me. In part because, like, my family, because of what we've dealt with due to our uh, minority factors, whatever, um, we talk about it a lot. Like, um, yeah, yeah, we talk about, like, God, imagine because a, a big thing, ugh, I think I talked about this a lot with um, Black Klansmen, mm-hmm. like, the Jewish struggle put on us, frankly. Uh, is similar to I think the African American at least uh struggle except like Jews can hide usually like that's a thing like yeah. we all know that's a thing um or at least Jewish people know that's a thing because we've had two before like a like a you know little blonde Jews were taken in by families during the Holocaust. Yeah. And the, like, little brown-haired Jews weren't because they're like, well, they're going to find out. But if you're blonde, apparently it means you can't be Jewish. So, yeah, come on in. Like, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, it's a little more, maybe, maybe I've had those, you know, windows a little more 
open. Yeah, than and whatever. No, I, I mean, I'm by no means. It, it didn't feel distant to me. I, I'm not because, you know, I, I thankfully haven't had to deal with that really in my life. But I'm I'm saying purely from a, and we I feel like we talk about this a lot purely from a, a cinematic perspective. And and even when you bring up Black Klansmen, like if, for example, that movie had been done, but for some reason the the characters had been really been, had been lacking, I would still appreciate those themes that it's talking about, but I would still criticize the filmmaking. And so it's, and it's just the same thing with this. I would, it's yeah, the, just... the, the, the emotional thematic elements are very much there and I'm glad that they're being discussed, but from a other parts of the the cinematic construction, I don't think it all it works totally. And not to say that it, it it it's horrible. I'm just saying there was a big imbalance for me in watching it. I thought that the the discussion was interesting, but from a cinematic form, it wasn't very um I don't know, satisfying in a way which yeah, but and, even and, that in and of itself, I'm not saying that for me, it's like a rubric that's very similar, but it's still a different rubric than you would give to uh, like Fleabag on stage or whatever. Like, I'm not saying here nor there. I'm just saying even like I appreciate things discussing and everything. It's still like a little different. Yeah, I, and I, I agree. But I, I if if we were talking about a, a generic comedy, I would, I might say the same thing. It, no, it would, I'm saying we're, mi- I'm saying it, in it, com- I'm saying the rubric should not be different. Oh, okay. It, yeah. It is. <laughs> right. Okay. I yeah. don't think it should be, but I think it come off that way when, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and, and no, I, I still, I like appreci- I don't think anyone should give themselves a pat on the back for watching this movie. No, no, but no, I think no. everyone should watch it. So it's like a, it's a bit of a weird little catch twenty two. But yeah, yeah, it, it's still worth a watch because again, it, it does talk about pretty weighty issues going on, and that I I have the utmost respect for it. Um, but well, I think it's also well the acting's also really good and stuff. Like I don't think yeah. It's the same thing. Like, I don't think, not to get, the only example I can think about off the top of my head is, like, I'm not going to vote for a woman president because I'm a feminist. Like, it's not, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. I'm going to watch this movie because I care about social justice issues. Exactly. Okay, yeah. Which goes back to the writing. Like, I think it was, which goes back to, like, you thought it was heavy-handed. I thought it was written well. And it might be because I've heard a lot of, uh um, um adjacent things if not a lot of the same things Mm -hmm. whereas maybe those things are more distant to you which is no fault of anyone except perhaps the writing because uh if it doesn't reach as wide an audience it's obviously not as successful a piece given what they're what the intentions of the piece uh, appear to be yeah it it feels as though it was just as you may have said it was just uh taken directly from the play and i feel as though if i had been watching it in person in a theater production with that same writing it would work so much more because that whole Hmm. medium is very heightened and in this it feels not as as delicate or as finessed as i think but i just don't i just don't think and I know I'm at, like, I have a conversation, every conversation basically I have goes into all this stuff with his wife thinks about it. <laughs> but, and even like my mom called, like when I ever talk to my mom, I am being like, oh, sorry, I brought all that, whatever. But mm-hmm. like, I tend to, and even my sister gets mad at me for like being loud in public or whatever. But like, um, I think that this kind of, I don't think it was high, and I think it's realistic, at least, and maybe it's down to personality type, too, along with everything else, because, you know, a person is not just their struggles, right? So, like, Carrie Washington, yeah. for example, she was, like, a lot, but that is exactly how I am, so maybe it's sure. also, like, that kind of thing of relating, like, I know I'd be exactly like she was in that position, if not uh, more, but, um, 
like going off about the history and where everything comes from like i think that's totally fair because it's how we got here and that's why it's so frustrating because like you're still not you're surrounded by it you pretend to know about it you're still not listening to me like you just don't get it and so i think her her performance and the writing i think i don't think it was over the top i think it's like maybe like not from behavior or whatever but you're not gonna be you're not gonna be nuanced and as eloquent as possible and like chill when you're in that situation so i think it's more realistic than than what we usually see in in movies and on tv and stuff which is perhaps why that kind of it's like uh um i can't really think of it but like uh what you're we're used to observing is actually the inaccuracy and therefore when we see the reality it feels like the inaccuracy which can go to a lot of parts of sure. society but uh, like even like i was saying like even when i was on the phone with my mom or whatever and i you know i've been a little sad lately but not feeling oh, my Chloe, best i'm sorry oh that's okay henria it's no surprise because i you know you know um right. if you care about stuff it's definitely worth it but it makes things feel not as good sometimes but, um, but you know, especially, you know, I work with kids a lot and everything, and that's how I feel like I'm doing my part, kind of whatever. Yeah. But obviously, given the circumstances, I feel like I can't do that as much because I can't. Um, And so my mom knows I've been kind of dealing with that. And apparently she was talking to one of her neighbors. Don't worry. Safe. Safe to whatever. Her, she, <laughs> she and one of her neighbors were uh, <laughs> talking, and apparently her neighbor read an article, which I've seen a bunch, that's like, oh, don't worry nobody's doing stuff during quarantine like we're all just up you know you're allowed to be upset you don't have to like quarantine isn't a time to be productive or whatever like that mm. and this might be a hot take but and my mom obviously told me that to help me like feel better about f- not feeling productive or whatever right but and politely relatively but i told my mom i was like no offense i was like but that's the most like white privilege thing you can mm. say and i was like not even why i was like i don't mean white privilege is like white people whatever but it's just an expression that maybe isn't the best like feminism isn't the best word for that maybe for gender equality if, but um it's just like a very classist like look at it because like oh great like you have the time to s- so basically my mom just said what well, my point is here is my mom just presented this kind of uh kind offering whatever but it turned in me because of where i am where everything is and how i am anyway like carrie washington's character perhaps Mm. uh, based on what we've experienced maybe but also just who we are um like it turned on me like it's so like congrat no you shouldn't you everyone needs to take time for themselves whatever just to be healthy humans and do their best work and mental health and everything but you can't just say oh it's going to not good that means i shouldn't do it because like (laughs) congratulations like what a luxury like a bunch of people can't literally afford to have that so no this situation does not insinuate that allowance but a lot of people don't think about that because they haven't experienced anything along those lines which kind of gets to my point is that and it all builds up like it all bubbles Mm. so maybe that's why i could feel where she was coming from a little more like the whole idea of self-care it's because you have a good medical care and you don't relate maybe uh, therapy whatever as the self-care that it is so you add on this because it, it's just always there or whatever so you add these extra little flourishes the bubble baths and stuff when like to a lot of people self-care will be going to therapy because it's not an easily afforded thing right you know what i mean yeah so hello <laughs> no <laughs> oh, and, hello <laughs> no, I, no i mean I, I, I think that if only yeah. this movie had more tuna fish you know right now more so and now I I completely get that, and I didn't really have as much an issue with how Carrie Washington's character acts because again, it's her son is missing, and, and which is also the writing, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know it. And now I I'm not by no means trying to say that having big ideas discussed to or t- uh given to me is something I don't want because that's not the case at all. But the way that it was done, it made. The ideas feel preachy rather than a an effective form of of discussion. It made it feel like it but was what felt preachy. The, just the the just how how it was filmed, how just the the writing in in. Um, but I probably sound preachy a lot, but also it's just my reality. You know, you try to ex- yeah you know. 
Yeah, no, it, and and I, I, there's not there wouldn't be really one thing necessarily that did it, but and, and it, maybe it's just because other I, I found that the the kind of s- substantial story element or the cinematic standpoint to be lacking, and so those other things felt more showcased, and I guess it was it was those were the things that were left to be hmm. um, critiqued. And I, I don't want to repeat myself. I, I just, it, it didn't totally work for me by the end, even though I was glad I watched it and I appreciated the ideas that it brought up. I just did not think it was done as well as it could have been. Right. So that's all, mm. but yeah. it's, it's still, it's still worth a watch and it I has some, good. my biggest it, disagreement, it, like obviously it's like just the same set or whatever, which isn't the most interesting, but I think the writing was really good. I don't think it was preach or whatever, but mm-hmm. Um, I get it. Because also she's processing because you don't know what happened to her son or whatever. And she's thinking about, they're talking about and she's thinking about the whole time like how she got to this point to like everyone. Like they just don't yeah. get it, whatever. Like even her husband. Yeah. And and, and I thought her, a, her... But I really liked the dynamics. And again, you'll get to it. I think you get to experience a lot of stuff that you wouldn't even buy. Like reading whatever, like the conversation between Kerry Washington and... um. Mm-hmm. Whatever he was, the dude who comes in later. Was, yeah. You know. And it made me so mad. Mm-hmm. But, like, it made yeah. her mad, but. Yeah, I, I I thought her character and her writing was probably the best. Okay. I, I just found a lot of the other characters to be not up to that level. It, it's almost, in, in talking about the writing, it's not the same thing at, at, at all in, in a lot of ways. But it's almost how I would compare Aaron Sorkin's writing from something like the social network compared mm-hmm. to the newsroom. The newsroom is so didactic and on, and on I the nose. Seen it. Okay. Well, it's it's so constantly beating you over the head with things as compared to the more subdued version that David right. Fincher brought in. And again, they're not the same it's not the same things cuz it's dealing with much more weighty issues, but it's how I would compare um even something like Black Klansman to this movie or something. It, it's something about the execution was off to where those ideas were not as interesting to watch in a cinematic form. It, it, it just, it, it felt lacking in that way. And it's this, it's, it's how I would compare it, like the, the newsroom to Steve Jobs or the, the newsroom to well, uh, social network. Let me ask one more time. Okay. How, do, did it compare in those ways uh, to the flea bag? Because that was even simpler visually. Uh, f- like fl- flea bag live. Yeah. I mean the. I don't know if there was much else. Well, as we even said, we, we I was even watching it while it was going on. Like I, I mm-hmm. it's and so from a. Uh, as a whole. Visually or cinematically there's not much there it's just her sitting there talking and so i would i mean it's it's almost the same thing like watching like a lecture or something where you're you're listening to what the person is saying and now i didn't do that with american son but in talking about fleabag live it's a, a similar issue it's she's there i'm and i can hear her talking and it's essentially the same thing as if i was browsing on my computer or if i was just sitting there watching it there's not a whole lot mm-hmm. to discuss Comparing it to American Sun, it's a s- similar idea. Now, the the issues are much more interesting in American Sun, of course, and they're much more important. But so, so I mean, in in a way, it's the same issue, but uh. d- I mean, it's slightly different. But because um, one is a true just li- live filming of a play, as opposed to something that is a a film. Well, it's basically a live filming of the play. It might be how it's presented, but that's basically what it is. It's all the same people. The set looks yeah, basically but, uh, the but, same. But I mean, in terms of there being much more of it, it's a, it's not just someone putting a camera during a a, a, a stage performance with with a crowd coming in. It's like here, let's hire let's hire the actors again. Let's create these sets, and it's going to be it's much more of a cinematic standpoint or mm. c- cinematic creation. Even if it's the exact same thing, it's still much more it's it's like it um i don't know what the comparison would be it's like 
like film like filming a ballet as opposed to watching um an a strict adaptation of that play or or of that that ballet it's it's it it's yes it is it's similar somewhat but it's still slightly different to me uh, it, to I don't me think at it's least different except for the close ups but I mean, because obviously there's there's a lot of cutting, there's a lot of direction in it, and so there's from yeah, that it's standpoint, all one, it's all one take basically. Like, I mean, it is exactly. I mean, it's the same as the play. Yes, but it's still a director choosing when to cut, where to shoot, and how to shoot, it, as opposed to you just watching a still single shot of someone talking. Would you prefer? No, I would just rather watch the play in person. But what? <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> I t- I get it, I, and so I, and, and 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 again, I'm glad it's there, but I don't know if <sighs> I, I I I would so much be more I I, I from a a cinematic point, I I didn't love it. I'm still um, glad it's there though. It's it's important to have movies like that. So uh, uh, what <laughs> what? Uh, nothing. No, no. Uh, Ugh, I don't want to ask what you mean by movies like that because I I get your point. I just think that there's you know. it, it, no, it's it's important to have mo- even if I guess I I can't mm-hmm. remember what we were talking about before, but I would so, even if this movie was horrible in every way except that it had important ideas, I would still want it to be there. It's like I said, like you you shouldn't like mm, how do I say like it does not make you a feminist to be like i want a woman on my team on my sports team because women are just as good as men so let me right let me ask for a woman on my team (laughs) like if you actually think women are just as good as men it wouldn't matter if you had any women on your team or not right right so if these ideas are valuable truly which they are and also not something that we should be praised for appreciating then the movie should have to be good by your standards especially if you didn't think the writing was good in communicating those issues it's, yeah it's i mean a- i i mean i want the i w- want the movie to be good but, but i why? want because i like watching a good movie what? right <laughs> so well, it's i i i want i want I I want important and as I said before the discussion is there. I it's I have no issues with the discussion or the yeah. themes. I'm and so I'm saying I want the discussion to be out there either way. If I don't like the movie, that's fine. I don't care. I'm still glad it's there because it will still present ideas as I in some ways bluntly to to a a, a wide audience. And so I from know. and and so I I don't care if the, if the the all of the filmmaking is isn't amazing. I, I don't. I, I know, I'm stu- but if you think the presentation I, I want, I, is bad, then you're allowed to say like, no. I, I would. I would love the movie to be a, a five out of five, but it's not. Yes. It's yeah. It's I I, think, like. I think part ahead. of why you didn't like it is totally separately. It's just because you're viewing it, you're thinking of it as a movie as opposed to like, uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge's thing, where in fact it's like this weird kind of hybrid that's accessible right. whereas it's a play is not accessible mm-hmm. so i think if you go into it like okay the, like i'm gonna watch this is kind of like it is what it is and i'm gonna watch it because i the content i find interesting i like that actors or whatever sure like a normal play no one goes to a play for the set i mean they might oh, good on you well. but like people don't go to i don't think the main draw of plays usually is the set right so it might be about a, a, you know, mindset as well. No pun intended. Where you're, that you know that you're, that's what you're doing. Maybe. Yeah, it's just. But I mean, I, I mean, I feel like it's it's okay to judge something with the medium that it's being presented through. You know. Yeah, I know. I just don't think it's being presented as a movie. I think it's being recorded. I think it's being presented as kind of a more upscale presentation. Of a, a filmed play again like the david Ten- tenant hamlet i watch is very similar so i wonder sure. how you feel about that because it's basically but, done the same way but I, but i feel like someone going in and not knowing anything about it and not knowing that it is a play i don't know if that's what they would know until the movie ended they may say this is very 
theater like, but I don't think yeah. that it going in blind. I'm mm. saying it's like, oh, hey, American Sun, I'm going to watch this. You wouldn't think, oh, this is just a, a live. This is just a a heightened theater production. This is just sure. a a film done in a theatrical way. Sure. Okay, but it's like Locke, like a like uh, um. I don't think anyone would click on it <clears throat> just because of the name and be like, I'm going to watch this now. Maybe they wouldn't like dope. They're probably the person who would adjust more easily to the type of movie it is but i mean if they even read like it's a, it's a, i don't remember what it says but it's basically just like two parents deal with not knowing where they're in a police station not knowing where their son is like like that right you know what i mean like it's a live it's a, a real time kind of thing so i mean i could be wrong i mean it might just be i don't know yeah I, I, and no i i get that totally it's just I, I also I don't think it's right to say oh well this is this is what they meant so I'm not going to judge it through the medium that it is it's like it is it is a film there's there, it's it has it has shows a, shows the flea bag on stage but What's it's that? it's it's filmed it's the exact same thing it's not though there's there's a difference between watching if you put a a camera in front of a ballet that was going on and then you then there was a movie a year later with the same those same dancers and a it was a, a strict adaptation of it it would still be a different thing it's still a film i wouldn't it's not the same thing as watching a live performance it's someone it's a studio saying here we're going to make this play into a movie with these same actors we're going to create these sets and so it, it's it's not the same as saying go put these cameras in the the uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge play that's going on right now, and so we can film that and put it somewhere. It's a a. It's the same thing as if they were. Um, it's it's the same as the majority of other movies. It's it's a studio making a more calculated decision as opposed to, and it's a director choosing when to cut, wh- what to shoot, and how to shoot it, and how right. to direct actors as opposed to. Here we're we're gonna be a part of the audience and just set this camera here so we can show this one performance to other people. Yeah, to, to that me, a to director me, directed and that wrote, that wrote in all the but, same ingredients. But, but cinematically, there's a lot of cutting. It's not a static shot. If it had been a right. single, if it had been a single shot from a wide angle, you would have liked and, that more. No, no. Then then that argument would make sense. If it had been a single static shot, and it said, "Now this is the," then I would have said. That makes sense, but having a director who's choosing how to cut things, where to cut it, who to how to do a close up, where to do a wide angle. I mean, angle. it's basically just who's talking. To be fair, but it, it's still it's still a choice, though. It's a, and it's different from a a static camera in front of a live performance. Well, that said, they chose to make it a play and not uh, originally they chose to make it a play and not a full on cinema movie movie, right? Because they thought the story would be best told through that mean so it which makes I, sense which i would yeah well, which so I, it makes which, sense that they duplicate that they uh nearly replicated that i it might just be a what you it might just be a again like a heuristic no, no, thing like no, i've it, seen a lot of like i've seen <clears throat> richard set like i've watched a lot of royal shakespeare company they edited a little bit like the david Tennant hamlet and it's very much in this vein so maybe it's just like what you've seen before makes it more comfortable or normal yeah, or yeah, not and now Logically, it makes sense, but does it actually? It's the same as if you translated a thousand-page book into the exact thing. That just because it makes sense to do it doesn't mean it would necessarily work in another medium as that same thing. Right. Well, so, that's why the book's usually better than the movie. There you go, and which and is it's, why I, maybe and, they try to make it similar to the play. And so, and so that's what I'm saying. I think I would so much rather th- watch the play than see a this movie. All right. Oh. Uh, I mean, because it, it's there. There's a difference, like at least at least to me. And if you feel differently, that's fine. I'm just saying, like, there's a difference between American Son, the movie, and Oh Hello on Broadway. It's to me, they are very they are very different. That's uh-huh. that's a la- live performance with an audience as opposed to a a film that has a director sitting there in the chair with actors and they and the the crew around him 
and that being a and so to me I don't the, know. Those, the, well to be fair the crew is also in the theater for any broadway production doing yeah, the yeah I, I mean it's it's more more so the the and then there's the 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 post production with how they're cutting things but they did which, that on oh hello too there was tons of posts yes but it's still it's still a a, a that's a live production a theater production at a at a theater as opposed to a a movie no. set that has a but the David Tennant one I don't even know if it had an audience I doubt it but it was still done on the stage exactly the same way but no audience it also has to do I think <clears throat> with the genre like obviously oh hello they play off the audience a ton whatever I imagine the audience of American Sun what does not make much noise right uh, to me there's a difference between american sun the movie on netflix and a a oh hello flea, the movie uh, on netflix a, a flea bag live there it's a difference it's a it's the same thing if you compared mm. a a blockbuster to i, I don't know a, a a theater production of that blockbuster i, I, I don't know mm. it's it's it to me it's a different thing it's someone it's a live performance where you're watching the single whereas uh as a movie there are constant um there are many takes and there's and there's a post-production process where the saying okay no we're going to choose this shot over that shot no let's do the wide angle there this the close-up there to me there's a difference between that and a oh hello on well, broadway how does, this, how does this compare to Locke then well, Locke wasn't. I mean, that it's that's it's the theatrical and feel, but that was not a a play originally. I'm just asking how it compares because it is. I'm gonna say like buried with Ryan Reynolds, driven 127 hours. How's it compared to 127 hours? I found the the direction in 127 hours to be much better and much more finessed and interesting. As whereas this, it was, it felt kind of inert and a little lifeless whereas something like 127 hours there was much more i don't i just found that much more cinematic well i think that's the thing i think in part because of the story they're telling particularly i think that's why it's important to have it be grounded and realistic which i agree it was like it didn't have a music behind it because real life doesn't have music behind it so sure. that's what again why i think it was an important decision why they made it into a play initially and why it was uh shown to us through uh basically in the same way they made the play it went by the same right book uh, the filmed version right and I, I don't mean to get just get caught in a loop here but it's it's as if i compared watching les mis in the theater with henry wilkinson as opposed to the tom hooper movie there's a difference there even if it, even if that, even yeah, if the, the, and so, <laughs> and so it's the same thing. I, I would criticize the performance, the live performance or, or a, a, fil, a blunt, a static shot of that live performance as if I was watching a film. It's the same thing. I'm, I'm going to criticize it through the medium that it's being presented. Even if it's done shot for shot or the exact same lines, it's still, they're still choosing to make it a movie. They could have not done that. And so I'm saying if you, you if you're choosing to make it as a novel, make it as a TV show, as a movie, I'm going to critique it through that perspective. And it's yeah. the same it would be the same thing if it was a, a comedy play or something. It, it it's the same thing to me. In terms of that. So. Oh, yeah. So I think they just left room for which again went into the initial design and transferred into the de design of this. They let the work the writing the story and the acting kind of speak for themselves because those are the most important pieces but sure i take your point <laughs> yeah um mm. but yeah five stars <laughs> it's, it's three for me um <laughs> all right well chloe should we talk about atomic blonde two oh, a little bit yeah <laughs> I don't know anything about it. It's on Netflix, I guess. It's which is kind a, of disappointing. Well, it's it's, like, it's an early <laughs> early development at Netflix. It has not been officially okay, uh, okay. like greenlit. So, well. but apparently that's what the original or the director was had thought of as to what a sequel might look like what? or might like might, Netflix? might go. The heck? Well, that makes well, me uh, less excited, if I'm honest. 
Yeah. But they might, uh, Netflix might back out of the deal when they realize how expensive that Martin Scorsese movie is going to be. Yeah. Well, that's it. So there's like nothing about it except that there might be a sequel at Netflix. That it's it's an early development with Charlize oh. Theron. So. Well, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. They obviously they set it up for another one. So. Yeah. I, it's I like mean, very I, James Bondy in that way. Like you can just keep rolling them out. Yeah. Well, that would be very nice, but that'd be kind of sad if it was on Netflix. Because it's an action movie. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. But, no. Again, I'd probably rather see the uh, Martin Scorsese, Leonardo DiCaprio movie, but that's me. Same. Is, especially if it's uh, Devil in the White City, because I've been waiting for that. Oh, yeah. For, like, <laughs> this is kind of a shocking to me, but probably for, like, a decade now. Whenever Leonardo DiCaprio bought that, no, not a decade, maybe like seven years, six years. But whenever he bought the rights to that move to the book, I scooped up the book, I read the book, I said, "Wow, this will be great." And it's been forever. Yeah. Ugh, and he'd be so good in that role. <laughs> so I hope that's what it is. I think that's what it is. Is that what it is? I think so. I could, I could be wrong, but I, I think it is. Be so good. Hopefully, I mean it's very not a very pleasant story, but just visually i'm also obsessed with the world's fair it's like a thing in my family sure so Mm -hmm. all right well i don't think there's much else news really just because everything's being pushed back that's about it there's not much yeah production going on have you heard about what's it called quibby 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 i have no idea what quibby is no (laughs) i I see i see when i'm watching freaking columbo yeah they're uh (laughs) It's like the antithesis of Columbo. There's uh, there's constant commercials dur- on the IMDb TV thing for Quibi. Quibi. And and the, let me just say this. I'm not a I'm not a advertising expert. The commercials are horrible because they don't even communicate they? what cuz they they don't even communicate what it is. I've to this day, I don't know what it <laughs> is. I've seen I've seen the com- the commercials for maybe Four or five months now. I have no idea what it is. I don't think I've really seen many commercials for it. The well, the only commercials that I've seen it on are on IMDb TV. I, so I, I don't know, but I've seen I, I've seen so many different ones too. I, I don't know what it is. What are the commercials like though? It's like someone saying, "Oh, here, I'll just watch it on this," and then it does Quibi, and but it doesn't. <laughs> but it, it doesn't. It doesn't say. <laughs> What does that mean? It, 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 but like it says, like some like someone trying to watch something, but then someone yeah. else like saying, "Oh, here we can watch it on this," and then it does Quibi, and I'm like, "Okay, so is it?" <laughs> That's absolutely. Like, is it is it an I'll app? I'll tell you. I'll like, tell you what a, it is. Okay, please. As far as my what I've taken in, it's a sh- it's an original content streaming service. Okay. Yeah. See, I did not get that at all. It's like the TikTok version of netflix like like uh, every episode is like i think like 10 minutes long or something like i think their episodes of each show for their because they have lots of shows because it's a streaming service of only original content and they're they're like five minute five minute episode shows or like 15 minute episode shows i think like at the longest basically it's a uh, pointing out how short the attention span of the american human is yeah. Hmm. But uh, it's got like, it's like covered in famous people, I guess, because it's not that much of a commitment temporally. But like the projects seem cool. And it's like a huge range, too. Like some of them seem kind of, I mean, a lot of them are like not for me, but some of them seem cool. Like there's a, oh, now this is weird. I'll tell you about this one. There is. It's like, it feels like nailed it. Like they looked and nailed it and they said, Oh, I've never seen that. Like that, you know? Like, mm-hmm. um, is his real name Titus Burgess? And I, whatever, Titus Andromedon hosts a cooking competition show where the two other judges, and it's like Gemma's three favorite people. The other two judges are Anthony Parasky and, um, Dan Levy. Hmm. And now the thing is, so it's like a cooking competition or whatever, right? I don't know because I only saw the little thing about it. I mean, how much can they put in the preview when the episode is only five minutes long? I don't know. So, but basically, it's like so weird. But this will give you the vibe. So okay. it's t- it shows you that the world is burning. So like everybody's in like a full uh thing, whatever. You know, trash bag cover, whatever. You know, the thing people wear. 
right? And like right. their head is covered and stuff, whatever. And the cooking competition is people have to use only the ingredients that are shot at them via like cannon. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's, I'm not kidding. Huh. I even interesting. Wait, let me. I took pictures to send to Gemma cause I, of the preview because I said, "What the Gemma? You know about this? Oh no, I didn't take a picture of the ridiculousness. Dang it! Well, you'll have mm. to look it up." And then some of them are like actiony with like Liam Hemsworth or like brain okay. action with like right, Liam yeah. Hemsworth or whatever. I, the commercials gave me no and go really? n- no idea. No, Shoot. they they showed it as it was something someone would maybe watch or like yeah. a clever way to watch something. No, no, um. Uh, no advertisement as to the upcoming programming uh, that it is a streaming service to weird. me at least. I could be way off, but yeah, you, I mean, I could be off. I'm just pretty. No, sure no, no. That sounds is. that sounds like a, what it would be. Yeah, and but. some of the shows look pretty good. Like there's a show where uh, it's a I think it's called the Game Show, but it's like G A Y M E because it's like two straight men are competing and it sounds very uh, but anyway it's like very <laughs> camp and everything but like two straight men are competing for who can act the most gay yeah okay great i know but that show actually looks very funny but it's like <laughs> it's like with famous people i like, get like i saw moshe kasher on there i wasn't really caring until i saw him and i said oh i'm gonna watch that at least that episode because i'm obsessed with moshe kasher but um uh yeah so it looks very weird it's a full range there's a there's one but they have a lot of money or something or are in deep debt which apparently is the same thing Mm. Uh, like netflix is like 80 billion dollars in debt but anyway um but there's one with sophie turner and this looks god awful she's like leaving her it's everything bad and wrong with just terrible on tone deaf cliche things so she's like leaving her uh, mental rehabilitation facility and getting on the plane to go home, but she's planning on killing herself on the plane. Hmm. Already very tone deaf red flags, right? But anyway, and then Henry, Henri, <laughs> the plane crashes with, and the only survivors are her and this dude who's clearly kind of into her. And all of a sudden it becomes uh, the sequel to, we pick up at the sequel to, uh, um, oh, what's the movie? Chris Evans on a train. Snowpiercer. Snowpier. So then we're at the Snowpiercer sequel because it's a crash plane and they're in the middle. And it's, it's just the two of them and it's uh, just, uh, they're in like snow and crap. And he's like, mm. I need to know you're not going to just give up on me because she's suicidal. I'm like, oh, dear God. So you they go from the game show to that. Okay. Something yeah, that, for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I haven't gotten any of that from the advertising. So that's, uh, you, 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 you failed. They failed. Quibi. Yeah. Or well, they time. succeeded if that's what they're offering, but Maybe. It's just riddled with famous people. Like Interesting. uh Chrissy Teigen is doing her own Judge Judy. Okay. Like that's I'm not kidding. No, that's yeah. Horrid. Okay. People pret- ugh. <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Well, cool. Well, that's about it for news. Now, n- don't really have any mail this week, but the Film Buds podcast at gmail.com is where you can reach us at. And as we did on the last show, if you caught it, we did read some stories by people about their favorite quarantine entertainment. So please send us yeah. any, and we might we would read it on the next show or whenever you do send it. Yeah. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Film Buds. We'd love to we'd wish. love to have you there with us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yeah, you people should can still write in regular questions. Yeah. We're still, we're still chilling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we can end off with our picks of the week. Yeah. Chloe, do you have, have much? I only got a couple things. Well, I don't know if this counts because I've definitely recommended it before because it's one like a classic fave. Educational, funny, nutritious, uh, well acted, little inappropriate, but very sweet. I'm obsessed with Zach Woods. So like we're covered there, but I, uh, my dad has never seen it, so we've uh, we're already. I think we're already after like four days now in the la- the season finale, season two of Silicon Valley. Oh yeah, such a good show, so yeah. good, so good. We love it, and you learn a lot. Like that's a world I have, n- I know nothing about. Right, and it's all very. Uh, yeah, it's a cool show. Yeah, everything I talk about is true, so it's neat. Mm-hmm. 
Makes me and, care about things I don't care about. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You do one. You do one. Then I'll. Well, I think. Okay. Well, the the main thing I've been watching, I've been going through Cheers on Netflix. <laughs> That's funny. Which which I love. And what's up? We're, we were talking about Woody Harrelson. Yes, whenever that was two days right. ago. And I have a fun fact, Henry. Okay. You know, we haven't talked about this in a while, but you know, I I have feelings about Grizzly Man, the docu- the Werner Herzog oh, yeah. documentary, right? Yes, yes. He, Grizzly Man, was uh, got second place to Woody Harrelson for that role. Grizzly really? Man was almost that dude that I don't know the name of. Wow. Yes. That's interesting. Yeah, that is, right? That is <laughs> genuinely interesting, I feel like, yes. Yeah. Well, cheers. Now, I will go ahead and say this. There yeah. are there are a couple episodes here and there that are dated. And I I, I don't dated. support those. And so if you come if you're watching the show and you come across one of those, just take your remote and go boosh. Just sure. change just skip over it because 95% of the show is truly fantastic and is hilarious. But there there are a couple Episodes here and there that are dated, um, but really, ninety five percent of this show is absolutely hysterical, not offensive. And, yeah, and v- so well written and so well acted, and it's a great little escape for these days. And then I watched Rio Grande, the John Ford western. Oh, from, throwback! Yeah, from I guess. 50s or 60s I, I can't be sure and it has john wayne and it's about this cavalry unit that's uh in the rio grande region and it's essentially just about them surviving there and dealing with conflict with the N- native americans it's it was overall pretty solid it's nice to see john wayne being a little bit more subdued his character is more darker and reserved and it, i prefer him in that because i'm not a, a big john wayne fan in general mm-hmm. but i thought he was quite good in this also one thing with john ford i guess he, he was one of the filmmakers that went to and shot action in world war ii and then made films to present back to the american public but one thing that i think he stands out for at least in this is that he seemed to have shot the majority of this on location Sick. and so like that landscapes are amazing. Always a good call. Yeah, because there are so many westerns out there from this era that are clearly shot on a the sound set. stage. Yeah. yeah. And the landscapes are amazing in this. And it was overall it was pretty solid. There was the the middle kind of sags a little bit, mm-hmm. but but by the end it's 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 You're good. Back in. Yeah. And then I rewatched Logan Lucky last night and it's a Ooh, classic. Classic. I, I love it. Instant classic. It yeah. so good. Daniel Craig. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Amazing. <laughs> oh, yes. And the, I, think, the whole ca- I think that was the first time I liked Dime Driver, I think. Yeah. Really, the whole cast is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Now, one, one weird thing, and I have tested this on a few different versions of it, like once on Amazon Prime and then once on when I, I watched it on Blu-ray. For mm-hmm. some reason, the... The levels of the vocals to the soundtrack is super imbalanced. Like when if we have the hmm. the the dialogue or or a volume setting where the dialogue is like pretty audible, the yeah. soundtrack will be blaring like Weird. like annoyingly so. Oh, that's and not so great. I, yeah, and so I don't know. And I've tried it on a few different versions, and so it's not just the Amazon Prime version. It's weird. Weird. And so like whenever it like goes. and the, the soundtrack is so aggressive that like. Whenever it comes on, we kind of have to turn it down a few notches what? and then turn it back up for... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's very weird. Hmm. Are you watching on the same platform always? I mean, uh, on the same uh, physical, on the same thing always? Like, are no. you always watching? It? No. Was that a consistency or no? Would be oh, no, 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 no. I've, so, I've watched it a few times on ver- on different things. That's... Yeah. Uh, so. Huh. Weird. Wow. Indeed. Sorry, Stephen. Sorry, Steven. <laughs> yeah, you, you pulled a Christopher Nolan. You oh. messed up your sound mixing. Oh, no. That's sad. <laughs> we love Christopher Nolan. Don't worry. Of We're course. just salty because we, uh, we want Tenet yesterday. Mm. 
Well, Chloe, anything else I for do. you? Ugh, it's going to be good. I don't think so. I don't know what I've been doing, but I guess I haven't been watching TV. <laughs> yeah. A plot twist. <laughs> uh, that is All so right. weird. Yeah, I don't think I don't I think I have anything else really. No. <laughs> <laughs> you just check the files of your brain there for the thing I said. Mm, no, nope, not seeing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, all right. Well, I guess that that about does it for the yeah. show. I guess we're just keeping an eye out for what we're doing next. Or? I don't. It's there are. Yeah. I. I don't know. I'm fine with anything. How but exciting! Yeah, <laughs> we'll find we'll find some something good. There's that new Olivia Munn romantic comedy on Netflix, Chloe, with uh, Sam Claflin. Claflin. Sam Claflin's in it. Yeah. Shoot. It's a like it's a wedding comedy. Oh, I saw that just this morning. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Could do. Uh, that's true. I very likely won't be as a, you know, college <laughs> professor for that. So. That's that's a, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So we'll we'll you know uh, plenty of choices for next week. So just stay updated on the filmbuds dot com and social Let us media know for that. If you that. have anything you want us to uh, watch, yeah, and check out Music Buds as well. The the new episode. <laughs> and again, bear with us if the audio is not perfect. We're still getting used to the remote angle. Well, Chloe, I gotta say. Reviews like American Sun is why I like doing this show. Yeah, you know, we we get to have I hope a good. So, Henry, <laughs> we get to have a good discussion. <laughs> okay, good. You know, is this is this our our new our new leave no trace or something? Our new uh, our I new bombshell so. <laughs> could be a new could be bombshell level maybe. It's our latest not leave no trace level. Yeah, our latest bombshell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did we fight over bombshell? I don't know. I feel Marshall's like got awful. I, f- I feel like I remember us talking about it, but probably we did talk about it. <laughs> we definitely talked about it. Yeah, I just don't remember. Yeah. Hmm. What can you do? Just watch it and form your own opinion. There you go. And then let us know. Yeah. All right. Well, as always, we hope everyone is, st- is staying safe as best you can. Yeah. And Chloe, it. I, I hate not getting to see you in person. I say it's it every time, but I, I miss strange. you. Yeah. yeah. The the only thing I like about not seeing people is I feel uh tall. It's like Schrodinger's height. Like, I don't know. I can't. It's possible because I'm not seeing anyone else that I am tall. It's like I don't see you. So who knows? <laughs> Right. Who knows what's happened? Perhaps yeah. Henry. Maybe I'm you'll. A, I'm slightly taller because next to you, I am very short. Maybe you'll be taller than me next time we see each other. Whoa. <laughs> Who Whoa. knows? Who knows? Hold your horses. <laughs> yeah. All, all you doctors out there. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my dad will be really proud of me for this. Right. But you're taller in the morning than you are at night. Hmm. Gravity. Makes sense. Yeah. That's true. I believe you. I told you. I've watched this video about explaining gravity to a five-year-old. I still didn't understand it. The five-year-old did. But I absorbed the fact that you're taller in the morning. Yeah. Cool. And I do understand why. Yeah. But I I hate to admit that I do understand where flat earthers are coming from. I'm absolutely not one. Absolutely not. But I have the same questions. Hmm. Why are we all walking flat? Yeah. But it's just because cool. I don't understand gravity, not because the earth is flat. Yeah. My cat is stuck. Uh, Look how cute that is, though. Rosie. Yeah. Watch. This is for Henry and for nobody else. Ro- no. She heard me and she said, ah. uh, excuse me? Do Next I time. look like a trained monkey? No. I'm an untrained Next- cat. Yeah. Next time. Next time. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, more than Henry did. <laughs> And we'll see you next time.